Hello, this is Pastor Jay with 431 Global Ministries with today's devotional prayer. Today's devotional prayer is taken from the book of Romans. Romans is by no doubt uh, one of the works of Paul in letters that he wrote to the in his third missionary tour. He was in Corinth. He wrote it somewhere between 55 and 57 uh, A.D., and, and he wrote this, and there's no absolute no doubt that Romans is the most doctrinally oriented works of Paul. In fact, many churches have themed their ministry after concepts in the book of Romans. Uh, there's many things that Paul contrasted in Romans. He used uh, dichotomies and he used synergies where he would take two things and he would either he would either show the contrast between them or he would show the correlation between them. Uh, there were many subjects he, he, he hit. The law and grace, faith and works, Old and New Testament, nature and grace, uh, spirit and body, reality and symbolism, God's faithfulness uh, against man's or humanity's faithfulness, secular and, and, and against what is sacred, uh, church against state. And he even went into subjects that uh, even became controversial uh, in, in trying to say that he contradicted James when he talked about living faith versus dead faith, living works versus dead works, uh, good versus evil, righteousness versus unrighteousness, natural versus unnatural, faithfulness versus unfaithfulness. He hit all these different subjects. And if you read and study his words out of context, you might say he does contradict himself. If you read and study his works out of context, and you look at it in relation to what other writers have wrote, other apostles, you might say that there's a contradiction. But the key is context. The key is knowing what he was saying and who he was saying it to and what was implied by it and why he said it. When you look at it in context... There are no contradictions. Absolutely not. In fact, what he said was actually on point with the same thing James said. Faith without works is dead. Um, but here we, we see a, a man who put a lot, of powerful, uh, a lot of powerful things into a letter to a congregation he had never met, had never met yet. And uh, that was the first time he had done that. Most of the times, in fact, I think in all of the times, other than this, when he wrote a letter, it was always to a congregation he had already met. But here, one of the most doctrinately charged letters that he, he ever wrote, he wrote it to a congregation he had never met. Perhaps that's why he did it. But anyway, we're very grateful and thankful to have his works today. And we today are certainly still benefiting from them. To today's passage of scripture is Romans chapter 5. We're going to read verses 1 through 5. Truly something that's good for the church in general, but in the times in which we're living right now, it's also very appropriate. It says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Note our prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we read this passage, we see the urgency and diligence in making sure we personally are justified. The precious benefits and privileges of such gives us comfort in our duty. The fruits of this tree of life are exceedingly precious. We have peace with you. It is sin that breeds the quarrel between us and you and creates not only a strangeness, but an enmity. You being holy and righteous cannot in honor be at peace with a sinner while that sinner continues under the guilt of sin. Justification takes away the guilt and so makes way for peace. And this is your good will for us, that immediately upon the removing of that obstacle, that peace is made. It is by faith that we lay hold of your arm and of your strength, 
and that we can have peace. Not just a peace that takes away the enmity, but a peace that ensures friendship and loving kindness with you. Abraham, being justified by faith, was called your friend. We acknowledge our Lord Jesus' role. He is not only the peacemaker between you and us, but he is the matter and maintainer of our peace. We have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand, but we were not born in this state. We are by nature children of wrath, and the carnal mind is always at odd with you, God. But you brought us into it. You, we were introduced to you through Jesus and were brought out of a state of nature into a state of grace. All through our believing dependence upon him, Jesus, and the resignation of ourselves to him. Father, we know that it does not stop there. We cannot lie down as if we already attained it, but rather we stand as those that are pressing forward. We stand as servants attending on Christ our Master. We keep our ground. We stand in a humble confidence of this very thing, that Jesus has begun the good work and will perform it. We rejoice in hope of your glory. Grace is only glory begun. The earnest and assurance of glory Yes, Jesus gave grace and glory to us, and it's a duty of those that, that have hope in heaven to rejoice and keep that hope alive. But not only do we glory in hope, but we glory in tribulation as well, especially tribulations for righteousness' sake, which seems to be the greatest objection against our happiness. But the apostle here explains why. Tribulation by a chain of causes greatly befriend hope, which he shows in the method of its influence. Tribulation works patience, not in of itself, but the powerful grace in which you, you give. And it works in us and improves our patience as parts and gifts increase by exercise. It is not the cause, but it yields the occasion, just as steel is hardened by the fire. Yes, patience does us better than tribulations can do us hurt. Tribulation in itself works in patience. But as it's sanctified to the saints, it works patience. In our afflictions, we have the greatest experience of your divine consolations, which abound as afflictions abound. All of this strengthens our character and encourages us to hope. Father, many in the world are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And we pray this passage over them today. But Father, the world right now is disparaged by the suffering of this virus. Fear has enveloped, not just fear for their health, but fear of their overall welfare as people are waiting for economic relief. This has caused people to be selfish and hoard and made it difficult for people to acquire simple things. Father, your children in other parts of the world are used to that. But for those who are not, this is truly a difficult time. We ask, Father, that in these disparaged times, you will help us to apply this passage. That we will examine our relationship with you and be grateful for the justification we have. Help us to keep our hope alive. Even in the things of this world seem unhopeful, Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus and keep the hope alive in our blessed assurance. This hope will not disappoint us because it is sealed with the Holy Spirit as a spirit of love. It is the gracious work of the blessed spirit to shed abroad your love in our hearts. With that love in our heart, we will not become unhopeful. We look to you for our daily strength. We look to you for our solution, whether it be now or whether it be later. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, how true are these words? I would grant to say that many of the people who are here in the United States that are Christian, uh, unless you are a, 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 a senior citizen that has had many years of faithful service, I would grant to say that um, this might be the most difficult time you may have ever lived in. 
For those who may have lived through the Great Depression or through other times in history, it, they might would understand or could relate and compare these times to, to those times. But for those that I would say are under the age of 70, maybe 80 years old, we may have never experienced anything quite like this. People are concerned about their their welfare. They're concerned about their pocketbooks, their savings. Their, their, if they own businesses, they're concerned about whether or not their business will survive. There's so much that people have that they're concerned about right now. And this is the first time I know in my lifetime, and probably almost everyone that's listening to this, that we have been restricted even in our worship. When you can't just freely go to church without some type of restriction. These are difficult times. There's a lot of uneasiness right now. There are people who's having anxiety. People who are stuck in their homes and locked in their homes and can't get out are, are experiencing mental health issues right now. These are hard times. But regardless of the times we face, regardless of those times we face, we have a hope. We need to live in that hope. We have to realize we have a relationship with God. He, we're, we're His friend. We're justified by faith. And with that justification, we no longer have the guilt of our sins and the guilt of our past. We have a hope. He said he'll not, He will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He said He will not put more on us than we can bear. The question I have for each and every one of you right now is, do you really believe that? Do you really believe that he will live up to his word? If you have faith and you're living in your justification, you have nothing to worry about. He's made his promises and it's impossible for him to lie. We now have to live and walk in those promises we have to keep our faith alive, keep our faith strong. And right now we may be dealing with a certain tribulation. It may not be a, right yet. It's not a tribulation from the government. That may come, but we're living in a tribulation. And we need to glory in this tribulation because every day we live and every day we survive and every day the Lord makes a way for us to have something to eat and a bill to be paid and, and some type of provision, we can, we can rest in the glory that our God is providing for us. He is our Yahweh provider. He is the ram in the bush. We need to glory in that. This is a tribulation. May we glory in it. And with that will come patience. With that will come a better character. And with that better character, we have a greater hope. A greater hope that we're proving faithful, that we have integrity, and that our place in heaven is even more secure than it was before. Let's apply this scripture right now. And with all of this, there's a special love that's given to us by means of the Holy Spirit. When we were regenerated and, and, and our lives were changed and the, the Spirit came in and changed us and we got the blessed assurance that we have salvation, there was a special dose of love that was added into us. And we need to show that love, that love to our Father, I, the love to others, the, the people that we might be cramped up in the house with, the people that we're meeting and encountering, the hoarders in the, in the grocery stores, we need to show that love and walk and walk in the justification that we have. That's my prayer for each and every one of you today. Yes, let's apply Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 5 to our Christian lives today. May God bless each and every one of you. I pray that you stay very safe and very healthy in the times in which we're living. Remember, Jesus is coming. God bless you.